So if I write this down verbatim, I sound like a used car salesman. But if I use bullet points, I sound like a used car salesman off his meds. I'm taking way too long to do this. How long have I been... What? Wait, hold on. What? This is awesome. <laughs> oh no, we're doing this instead. I just received an email from um, a friend of a friend, and uh, this is what it says. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's skip all that. Okay, I just started Photoshop classes in my high school. Good job. And I was told by Jason that you could help me. Uh, there is this girl in my class. We both suck at Photoshop, but we both love it a lot. I see tons of tutorials that show you how to do things but I want to make something that's mine and doesn't look like total donkey nuts, okay? Her birthday is coming up and I thinking, and I thinking I can take her out and give her a print as a gift, but I want it to be my work. A print, like you're making, you want to make a print of donkey nuts? <laughs> I tried to do something abstract, but it looks like finger painting. I want to see if we can get together and maybe you can give me some tips that I can fake it. <laughs> so I can fake it and not look completely stupid. I can pay a little, whatever. It helps, it could really help me impress her. It, it helps, it could really help me impress her? That, that's not where you put a question mark. If you're too busy for this, uh, don't go out of your way. Well, you know what? I think I got you, buddy. Okay, so it seems like you're looking for something that's going to be kind of easier to, to make. Something a little abstract, maybe kind of flat, but you want to use it in Photoshop. Uh, so I think this is really sweet. Um, so I am more than honored to be a part of this, and I'm going to do my best to make this rock. People ask me, why don't, like, why don't I light this thing up? It's because it's just really, really bright. Hey. Can't see crap. Before we begin, I need you to know that we're running a PC instead of a Mac, and I'm running the newest edition of Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. All right, I'm about to share with you a very basic way of using brushes and selections in order for you to hit the ground running and make some art. Oh, and by the way, yes, I shaved. Thanks for noticing. All right, let's get down to this. Open up your Adobe Photoshop and then you click here on Create New. And then what you'll see pop up is Recent Saves Photo. And I want you to go to this tab here and hit Print. This print tab will open up letter. Go to letter, it'll be 8.5 by 11 at 300 PPI, create. Don't worry about all the other settings, they're fine. And now you'll see on your screen, it's gonna look like a piece of paper. It's going to be eight and a half by 11. Right now is when I think you should probably save. You just go up to file, then hit save as. Type in whatever you wanna call the project. Make sure you save it as a PSD document and hit save. Now that PSD document or that Photoshop document will be in that folder. So you could always get back to it and update it or however you need to do it. So what you're probably gonna notice is that your interface is gonna be much different than mine. So what I need you to do is just go up to window, go down to the second one that says workspace, and then go over and slide all the way down past 3D, painting, photography, all that. Go down to Reset Essentials about halfway through and click it. Now, what you'll see is going to be exactly what you would do when you open up Photoshop for the first time. To make it look like the way I normally like to use it, go over to the right and you'll see these three little lines here. First is the color swatches and then these little lines here. These are tab groups. If you click on it and then you go down to close tab group, colors and swatches is now gone. Now you do the same thing with the next group for learn libraries and adjustments. 
Okay, so the first thing you're obviously going to need is a new layer. So we're just going to go to the layers panel, go all the way down. You'll see this icon it looks almost like a square with a page lip turn thing. Click on it. If you hover over it, it'll say create a new layer. Click on it. And now you see you have layer one, your background layer. We're going to leave it locked because we don't want to play with that. It's basically going to be like your blank piece of paper. So don't worry about that right now. Now we're going to do a quick crash course in brushes. Now if you see my cursor, you'll see it's a crosshair. You just hit B for brush and that will be your hotkey for brushes. Now if you go on your actual canvas and start clicking around, you'll see that you're making dots. And if you hold and drag, you're making lines. You want to get rid of everything on that layer, just hit Control A. Now select everything. That's what these little dots are. That's a selection. We'll get to that in a minute. You hit delete. Everything's gone. Now that we got the selection there, we want to get rid of that selection. Control D. So now that we're solid. Now you see my cursor is a circle, which is the radius of the brush. So if I hit the right bracket key, you'll see it get bigger, right? The left bracket key, it will get smaller. Now this is a pretty hard brush. As you can see, all the lines are pretty sharp. So let's say you don't want those anymore. You could hit shift and do the left bracket and you'll see that it's now a very soft brush. Now you hit shift right bracket a couple of times and now it's a harder brush. Now of course you could always change the color of your brush by going down here. Now you'll see that this square in the front, this black square is your foreground color and this white square in the background is your background color. So we're going to double click the background color and we'll open up the color picker for the background color and let's just pick purple. Okay. And now, wait a minute, it's still black because it's not the foreground color. So let's switch it by hitting X. Now the purple is in the front and the black is in the back. So purple, there you go. Now we're drawing with purple. And if you want to change that at any time, you just go back here. Double click on it and pick whatever color you want to use. Now if you want to back up, you can always just hit Control Z. And now we're back to a clean canvas again, clean layer. So now we're going to use selections. The selection tools in Photoshop tell Photoshop that this area is the part we don't want to mess with or this is the part we only want to mess with. Kind of like if you're painting a wall. You put the blue tape everywhere except where you want the actual paint to go. And that's the same situation here. Let's go up here. If you look up here at the toolbar, when you hit the rectangle marquee tool, which is the hotkey of M or marquee tool, you hit M and you can now make rectangles or boxes. The only thing is you can only make one at a time. Why? Because if you look up here, these are your tool options. Now there's a lot you can do with all, all these tools, but right now we're just going to look at these three boxes. Now this box, if you hover over it long enough, will say... Now this box, if you hover over it long enough, will say new selection. And that's why every time I try to open up a new selection, it's getting rid of the previous one. Now if I wanted to add to it, you could always click on these two fuse boxes together and it'll stay clicked and you can fuse to the boxes. Now I know you're thinking, that's not an actual box, I want a square. Okay, Control Z. So let's say you click and drag and now you got a rectangle, but if you wanted a square, you now hit shift and it will keep it in aspect ratio. As you can tell right now, this is a 4.320 inch by 4.320 inch. It is a perfect square. Now this is a good time to go up to the next option, which is gonna be the subtract from selection. If you click on that, you can now poke holes in this selection. For instance, let's go back to that brush. Let's hit B. If you run a brush across here, it's only going to paint where the selection allows it to be. You want to get rid of that, you hit Control D, and now you have no more selection and you're free to do whatever you want. Now one of my favorite techniques to use in order to create depth is to make a selection, and then take my brush by hitting B, then making a big brush, and then hitting shift and hitting the left bracket to make it smaller and then way outside of the selection way outside the selection start kind of painting it in a little bit and nothing will show up until you get close enough for there to start being little changes now this is awesome this is fun because when you get rid of it when you get rid of the selection by hitting control D now you have this 
weird geometric dimensional shape that can make it look like there's a hole in the paper or it makes it looks like abstract bars. Now you can do something fun with circles, watch. We can do right click, get the elliptical tool, click, shift, drag, and now we have a circle. We're going to go down to our foreground background color, but we're gonna switch it by hitting X because I want this to be black, but I wanna fill this in black altogether. So you could actually hit Alt and backspace and that will fill it with your foreground color just like if you hit control and backspace it will fill it with the background color remember that background is control backspace foreground is alt backspace but now that we have a black circle let's give it some dimension by hitting x to switch our foreground and background color so now purple is our foreground color and then we're going to hit b to open up our brush and i'm going to hit shift and i'm going to hit the left bracket lower the softness of the brush and now I'm going to hover kind of three quarters away over here kind of crescent moonish I'm going to tap once and now I'm going to hit control D to deselect and now I have a heavily shaded 3d ball now there's a lot of ways to make selections but the one that really lets you get your personality out there especially using this technique is going to be the lasso tool so you could get to there by going over by your marquee tool it's generally underneath it or you can hit the hotkey of L now you can use this to make any weird shape you want and then it becomes once you let go it becomes a selection. You can then use our technique of brushing over it. You can then use your technique of filling it up with the foreground or background color. You can do however you want and whatever you want with it because this behaves just like a normal selection tool. However, let's just get rid of this. Control D, then select everything. Control A, delete. Control D again. Now we go back up here to the lasso tool and we go to polygonal lasso tool that will do the same thing but it'll do everything in straight lines or perfectly 45 diagonal lines so you click here and click here you can click here click here click 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 just like the brush tool you have an option to do 45s and then you just double click and it makes a selection so now the best part about this is you get to play around. You got all the techniques you need. You know how to make selections, you know how to get rid of selections, you know how to fill selections, you know how to change your colors, and you know how to do your brushes. All that is more than you need to really make something fun and abstract. So now I'm gonna make one myself, and I'm gonna speed it up so you can see how it's done from beginning to end. And at the end, I'm gonna show you just another little technique to kind of just, you know, kick it up a notch. Just to kind of like, just to raise, just, just a little, just a little, just a little bit of, yeah, just some really, it makes it cool. There, I did a thing. I'm mean, using those techniques, I hope you did a thing. Now, if you wanna make that thing just a little bit cooler, do this thing. I suggest going to pixabay.com, typing in paper. And this is an old paper texture. Download that. Now grabbing that. Now you grab the paper texture, you right click and tell it to open up in Photoshop. It'll open up in its own tab. You just go ahead and click and drag it up here, hold shift and drop it right on top. Now what you do is, I, now what I do is I hit alt and I s use my mouse scroll wheel back. And I wanna see exactly how big this is, so I hit control T for transfer. Now you'll see this is exactly how big it really is. Grab any one of these and just start making it fit your canvas. And if it starts to do that, go back to, if it starts to like constrict like that, it's easy. Just go back to where it's wide, hit shift, click, and drag it again on one of those little nodes. Not a problem whatsoever. So now, you click off of it, 
and you have a piece of art on parchment. Now you can haphazardly slap anything together like I did, and when someone asks you, that's really interesting, what does it mean? You could say, it really defines man's struggle in a sea of emptiness to find some nugget of meaning that will last beyond his mortal coil. Or you can tell them you just slap crap together and you think it's cool looking. Real talk. Art is art. I may have, yes, haphazardly slapped this together to make it look kind of cool and that's it. And it may not mean much to me, but it may invoke an emotion in somebody else. So art, even if you're quote unquote faking it, really does mean that it's art. The fact of the matter is, you can't fake art. If you made something, you slapped it together, and it doesn't mean much to you, it'll come through. But with somebody who views it will be at a point in their life where they might actually really need to see it. So I've asked this question a thousand times to a thousand different artists. What is art to you? Is this art? Is something that I just haphazardly put together art? Or is it when somebody looks at something and they're in a point in their life where it just connects the dots to them and it means something to them? Is that art? Or am I faking it? Can you actually fake art? Leave your comments below. I'm curious to see what you guys think about that. I would love to have this discussion going because it's always a fun topic and everybody seems to have their own different take on it. So if you found this funny, entertaining, or informative, smash that like button, share with your like-minded friends, subscribe if you have not done so, and remember, be good or get at it. Nope. So now I'm just going to show you how to knock it up. Knock it up. Whew. I'm just going to show you how to take this to the next level. Next level. So now I'm going to show you how to kick it up a notch. Now kick it up a notch.